So welcome back to another episode, and let me tell you, this is going to be a long episode. This is something that I've wanted to talk about for a very long time, and it is my love for the animated show Megazone. And I want to talk about my love of Megazone today and show you my collection, not only these things here, but books and some other goodies down here as well. So one thing I'll also mention is, I'm going to put this video up into YouTube, but there will also be a video, the same video, on Final Bosses showing the anime footage as I'm talking about a lot of things because I don't want to get flagged on YouTube, obviously. Final Bosses, unedited version if you want to see that. I'll put a link down below. Now, let's get back to Megazone. And let me just start off by telling you how I got into this. How I even found out about this, this OVA. And that's something I'll say right now. Megazone is an OVA out of Japan. That's an original video animation. It was one of the first. And so it was an animated short created that went directly to video in Japan. It wasn't a feature film. It wasn't a television show. It was originally meant to be a TV show, but uh, they decided to condense it and just release it the OVA fashion. Now, I was just coming off Robotech. Uh, and I mean, like, we're talking 1985, I discovered Robotech. I was loving it. And I started to discover some other things. Uh, anime wasn't in this country at that time. But I was going to comic book stores, and this is what people forget nowadays, is that you couldn't buy anime back then. You couldn't buy tapes. You couldn't buy anything. The only way to watch anime was what was on television, or if you had a friend in Japan. And I, and I didn't have a friend in Japan, sadly, at that time. And one day I walked into a comic book store, and here we go. This. This book right here was just sitting on the shelf. And it was really expensive. Uh, I know it sounds weird, but it was like $30 for a little book. For a little book. All import costs back then on Japanese goods, books, model kits, extraordinary. I mean, they were uh, like almost double, tripled the price. It was horrible. But I found this little book, and I was like... Oh, this looks really cool. Uh, that looks like uh, the character designer of Macross. I'm like, huh. And I'm looking, I'm like, Megazone 2-3. I'm like, Megazone 2-3, 23. I'm like, what, what is this? And I start to flip through. And what's interesting in the book is, it's a collection of all of the cells of the, the original OVA of Megazone. Now, it was uh, a lot of people who worked on Macross went on to do, to do this. Uh, and yeah, so... I was, how I even figured this out is I, I bought the book and I looked through it and let me tell you, there was like, the thing that kind of got me was like, I was like, oh my God, there's amazing mecha in this. Great character designs. Really, I could tell by looking at the cells, really nice looking animation. That's the only way I could tell. But, and I'm like, and here's what got me. You have to understand, I'm a little kid. We're talking 1986, 87. And I saw sex scenes. Really, I was like, Oh my god, characters are having sex in a cartoon? It was really... Whoa, you know? And there was blood, there was guts. I mean, as a young boy, I was in love. You know, I, I, I loved this. And it was so adult and I kind of... I was flipping through it and I was able to get the other book right here. And I was like, okay, cool. And I could piece it together. And I could start to understand the storyline. And then I realized, oh, this book is first, this book is second. I put them together, I flipped all the way through them, and I just listened to the radio back then, and I'd read, because I couldn't read Japanese, and I flipped through every single cell, and I could make out the story. Isn't that amazing? That's, I, and I sat for hours just trying to figure out what was going on in the story. And it wasn't, I didn't fully, fully comprehend it until a little bit of time, I walked into a comic book store, and look at this. This is probably one of the very first anime fanzines written by fans for fans, cheaply produced because you, they couldn't afford to produce a, a really colorful book back then. Written by fans. And I, and I just saw Megazone on the cover. Now I'm like, oh my God, the original version of the Robotech movie. <laughs> yeah, so that's another thing. They took Megazone, unfortunately, and they made it into the Robotech movie. Released by Canon years ago, but we'll forget about that. Let's get back to this OVA. And so what was amazing is that I started flipping through this and somebody had written out the entire storyline of what happened in Megazone. I'm like, oh 
my god, this is in what a story. It was blowing my mind. And I'm going to give you a little short bit of what the story is all about. For anybody who doesn't want any spoilers, check out of this video right now and go find Megazone. You can find them on DVD still. But so what the story is about is it's it takes place in the 1980s, a place that I feel very, very comfortable in, obviously, because I grew up in it. But it takes place in the 1980s. And uh, the main character's name is Shogo. And he has a bunch of friends and they hang out and do all sorts of fun things. And then all of a sudden he gets a message from a friend of his that, you know, come meet me. And so he goes meets his friend. And his friend has this motorcycle that is just insane. It's just, I mean, it's just this like kind of like a, a brown motorcycle. And it looks unbelievable. And it's like, holy cow. And he said that he stole it from the military. And that the military was coming after him. And could you hide the bike for me type of thing. So as soon as that happens, the military comes in. Like, like all these like uh, you know, private eye looking guys come in. And they kill your friend. You don't know what to do. You jump on the motorcycle. You get the fuck out of there. Long story short, you find out one day when you're driving the motorcycle uh, that the military is coming after you. And all of a sudden you look back and you see all these robots. Uh, you know, like like coming out of the back of trucks trying to shoot at you. And the first thing that the character says, Shogo, he goes, he goes, he goes, robots. And then all of a sudden, the 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 motorcycle is known as a Garland is voice activated. So it transforms when it hits the name robot, like robot mode, and it transforms. And all of a sudden, he's in this robot. And he he crashes off the side of the highway. Really amazing scene. And then it transforms back into motorcycle mode. And he's like, what the fuck is this? Anyways. So what ends up happening is that he eventually finds out that the world he lives in, he, he's able to meet up with the military. Um, and how that happens is he goes down into this underground facility and he finds an entire city underneath the ground. I know, this sounds incredibly insane. And he's like, w what is this? And because the motorcycle lets down this little ramp that lets him down into the inner you know, sanctum of the city but nobody else is in. And that's where he meets the military. And one of the military guys, his name is BD, says to him, yeah, uh, we need to explain what's going on to you, just so you know what's happening. He's like, the world that you live in is not really what you think it is. Real like the Matrix, but Megazone came out in 1985. You gotta remember the timing it came out. Love this story, I love this story. So it seems that the real story of what's happening with the world is you're not really living in the year 1980. In fact, they don't know really what year it is at all. Very much like the, the Matrix movies. It's what happened is there was a war on Earth. These aliens attacked the Earth and they were really wiping out the planet. So they started making all these ships called Megazones, and like lifeboats, and sending them off into space. And this was Megazone 23, 23, uh, you know, that you're in. And what happens is you're in a state of like 1980 because that was the most like happiest time for the the planet was the 1980s so you're constantly in a form of of like hypnotism as well so the city is the real city but you say say you're in the city and you want to because you're in a spaceship and you want to go to like uh australia you go you go to the airport but you get like hypnotized, suspend an animation for a little bit, and then you come back. So it feels like you went away, but you didn't. And it's a way to keep you controlled and happy until, and this is the thing, the Megazones are flying around the universe or the galaxy, waiting hundreds of years for the planet to be sustainable again, so the ship can come back. Wonderful. There's also a an idol singer called Eve, and she is also a system of control. She's like a, a kind of like the Madonna, you know, or, or you know, of of this generation in the 1980s, and everybody loves Eve and stuff like that. But she's a system of control as well, but a good system of control. She's on your side type of thing. But but what's happened is something that the aliens that were attacking the Earth are attacking the Megazone, and the Megazone's like far away from Earth still. It's doing its loop, but the aliens have started to attack and there's really no defense mechanisms. So the military finds out what's really going on with the world and they're trying to hack into Bahamut, which is the central computer of Megazone. This is crazy story, isn't it? 
They're trying to hack into it to take control of Megazone to revert the ship and just take control of their lives and not be automated, you know, not be part of an automated society. So you're caught in the middle of this and you being the main character, your head's exploding. You can't handle it. And you have a girlfriend, Yuri, and you go and tell her and it's like, it's just, it's just a crazy story. And so the end of the OVA is the government taking control or trying to take control of the lower levels of uh, Bahamut to reclaim Megazone. Yes, and to try to get you back to Earth. So that's uh, part one of the OVA. So here's the thing. There's three OVAs. There's part one, part two, and part three. Part one is wonderful. It's an incredibly well done OVA. I loved it. Now, I never saw it till years later. I only had the books. And guess what? I went to a convention one day. I'm like, da 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 da. And I find more. I'm like, Megazone 2 3 Part 2? I'm like, there's a part 2? Now, here's the thing about part 2. Part 2 is my favorite in the series. It really is. But look at the character designs. Here. So, this is our main character. The guy with the, the brown hair and the guy with the brown hair there. They're the same character. When we went to part two, they got a new character designer in. And they decided to really kind of uh, make it more adult seeming. I don't, you know, they just updated the character designs a bit. It, it just gave it a very unique, I would say, more mature look to it. And I remember flipping through this going, oh my god, more blood, more guts, more mecha, and more sex? Um, Sold. <laughs> I was a teenager. I was sold. Early teenager. I was sold. So, Megazone. And so, I eventually got a chance to see the OVAs, I think in 88, 89, 89 for sure, where uh, an animation group, uh, the Victoria Animation Group, sent me beta copies of, uh, you know, parts one and parts two. And I saw part two in English. There was a, in Japan, there was an English speaking. Uh, like laser disc of you know so you'd watch the laser disc of, of, of the animation but it would all be in English and you would learn English that way that's that's, that's the way it was really so I watched that version and I loved it I'm still trying to track that down on laser disc but so I part two to me I know this is kind of a weird thing to say it's like the Empire Strikes Back of the series it does end it does end but it's dark it's really intense it goes a whole different direction and I can't praise part two enough part two is unbelievable I I could spend hours talking about part two about the art style just the the, the I love the amount of detail in this production and for anybody who's seen part two really knows what's going on with that now when we got to part three part three is it's part three. It's 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 not what I was hoping for after the masterful parts one and two. You see part three and you're like, oh, you went a different direction with Megazone. It takes place years later. I won't tell you what the spoiler is on. You know, it takes place years later and it's 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 okay. I I I'm a little nostalgic for it, but it's not as good as parts one and two. Parts one and two are where it's at so so that's the storyline in a nutshell i left out a lot of details of part two because i would really would love for you guys to check out part two part one it was a real great introduction part two wow blows your mind so i thought i'd just show you some of the other things i picked up megazone related here is megazone two three this great art book and yeah oh yeah just Comes with some great posters, and I love the old school designs. I really do of this stuff, but it's, I want to say one thing, the animation is, is phenomenal. You will not be disappointed. Oh, and here, this is a goodie. Man, I, and you have to understand, I bought all these books back in 1989, 1990. Can you believe that? This is how old this, this series is, but this is a, a series that I grew up with that really had an impact on me. And almost in the same kind of way that Star Wars had such an impact on me. Uh, you know, Macross had a huge impact on me animation-wise, anime-wise, but Megazone was like, it kind of showed me what you could do without being censored, uh, like for television. Like, just the amount of guts and gore and 
But it, but that that's also the thing as well is that none of the the the, the sex, the violence was just for the hell of it. It really was about the story. Like, yeah, the sex is a little over the top at times, but but the gore made sense. That like the the alien race that was attacking the Megazone, they are brutal. It is they are scary. It's a scary alien force that's attacking. They are very alien to us. So they attack with these vines and tentacles that just slice the fuck out of everybody. It's gross. It's fantastic. So there's that. Years later, I was able to pick up a really great all Megazone book here. And this has got every single thing in it. It really does. All of the Megazones, all of the, you know, all the character designs, all of the animated cells. God damn it. So cool. And Kim, for Christmas a few years ago, she bought me this. This is a great uh, book on transforming, uh, you know, like uh, motorcycles out of Japan. And of course, the Garland is in there. One of the most iconic transforming robot story from from the series. Wonderful stuff. So I was very thankful to get that. Now here, here's a golden oldie book. You don't see this. This is Artmic Designs. Artmic Design Works. You don't see this. And so this shows the early concept work for a lot of Artmic back then, a design studio out of Japan. And they have a lot for Galforce, Bubblegum Crisis, and obviously for Megazone. And it's really interesting to see some of the earlier versions of the Garland and what it was gonna look like. It's, it's really something else. Here's a very, very unusual, a very, very unusual book. Super freaking expensive. And uh, an old girlfriend bought me this long time ago. And it's all the, Design works of, of Megazone again, but it's kind of neat. They have a few designs near the front that are unique. It's it's really what you've seen before, but any chance to own anything Megazone has always been a great thing for me. Here's something that's gonna. This is something very awesome, and I I got this on eBay years ago when I swear when people weren't even using eBay, really, and this is this is great. It is a cell for Megazone. It's an an actual cell. So there's Shogo on his bike there with Yuri, and wow, what a... That's right in the, the, the beginning of, of Megazone, when he first meets her and he's giving her a lift to, to work <laughs> with her corrupt boss. But I was like, oh my god, years ago when I saw this, I was like, a Megazone cell, That's, that made my millennium, I'll tell you. It really, really did. And then, obviously, another big factor, as I said, was the idol singer Eve. Now... I didn't just like Eve's music, I, I adored it. So much so that back in 1989, I didn't have any of the soundtracks. You couldn't download it, you couldn't find it. You could only go to a, maybe a Japanese mall, and even then you, you wouldn't find Megazone CDs. That, was, that wasn't gonna happen. So I would watch my copies on beta, and I would tape certain songs off them. I would do that, I, I did that all the time. So my mom, I remember my mom coming downstairs going, what are you doing? And I had the, the, my ghetto blaster hooked up to my beta player and I'm playing this Japanese music. And you have to understand in 1989, that was a very unusual thing to do outside of Japan. It's like, I was a white guy listening to Japanese music. That was, I know that sounds stupid, but it was a crazy thing. I didn't think it was crazy. I loved Japanese music. But it wasn't the norm back then. So people were like, what the? You're listening to Japanese music? Do you even understand it? And it's like, yeah, I fucking love it. It doesn't matter. It's universally fantastic. And so here's some of my CDs that I got back in the day. Uh, I'm going to fall over. Uh, Megazone uh, Part 1. Uh, the vocal collection here, which I've listened to a heck of a lot of times. Oh, Part 2's music, which is really, really good. All the music's really, really good. Uh, and uh, Part 3, and I'll say this, Part 3's music is really, really good. It honestly is. And what have we got here? These are the DVD collections, and these came out a long time ago. Now, I think they're out of print. You could probably pick them up off eBay. I don't even know if you can download these things. I'm sure you probably can. But highly recommend these versions. These are really, really nice versions. I... I love it, and something I just heard in Japan, they have remastered Megazone. They've remastered it, and it's it's on Blu-ray now. And I saw some clips online, and I'm like, oh my fucking god, that looks unreal. It looks incredible. 
So I don't know if we'll ever get it. I don't know if they'll ever bring that out, but fingers crossed. If they do a Kickstarter, I'm there. I'm there 100%. Now here's the cream of the crop thing going on. This is from Rob. This is what Rob got me for Christmas. Oh my God, it must be about five years ago. It is the Garland toy out of Japan. Look at that, isn't that great? Isn't that fantastic? It's unbelievable. I still thank Rob for this. This is one of those kinds of things that I always wanted, but I would never buy for myself because it was at that time quite high in price. I think it's even higher now. You can't find it. So this is the Garland toy. It does transform. It really does transform, which is super cool. And man, there's a, there's a store in Vancouver here called Sakura Media. And I went in and they always had the Garland. This one here. This is the original military grade one before he paints it. Now, this is usually really expensive. I walked in there. They were just trying to get rid of some stock just after Christmas. I got this for like $70 Canadian. So what a super deal. And so yeah, here's here is the, the original military grade Garland. Really awesome. Stupendous, stupendous. Man, oh man, I've, I've waited a long time to talk about Megazone. I really have. It's just one of those things, as I said, made such an impact on me as a kid. And I still love to this day. I still, I still love the art and animation and the storyline. I mean, there's so much going on in Megazone. It's, it's, it's really something that should be, you know, looked back upon fondly and remembered and not forgotten you know there's all this other i'm not saying anything about modern anime there's a lot of modern anime anime and i'm not a huge fan of it and it's like this is what got me into japanese animation this stuff right here hard science fiction stories hard fucking violence and guts and amazing mecha you know crazy sexual overtones that you never saw in animation in this country for sure, and it's just what made me fall in love with Japan and become an addict for life. And uh, I gotta thank Megazone for that one. It's just, it's always had a bit of a hold on me. So, guys, I finally got a chance to talk about Megazone. So, anyways, guys, until next time.